Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire Four New Orders of America. Let us continue on from we last left off. So we are currently building up our cabinet. Uh, we're getting a lot of progresses in, you know, Department of State, Department of Treasury, all of that good stuff. And then on top of that, we do have Indonesia ready on the brink of war. Um, and we want to try to make sure that we can uh, that we can support them in any way that we possibly can. Uh, I want to delete this front line because that's not a, uh, a real one. Probably want to take Luremberg as well. I mean, I had to move some divisions around. But we'll, uh, we'll wait and see on that one. 63, you're defending quite well. You should be okay with where you're at. I want you to move here. Indonesia burned. With Indonesia once again splintered, Congresswoman and political analyst Jane Kirkpatrick has written another op-ed for Commentary Magazine. This article outlines the current situation in Indonesia and what the United States should do about it. Part policy proposal and part situation report, previous readers of the Congresswoman Kirkpatrick should be well acquainted with what she provides. Massive aid, be it guns, economic aid, or medical supplies, to the United States uh, as aligned factions in the area, specifically Lubis's clique. Uh, by ensuring that the new Indonesian leaders align with American interests, Kirkpatrick argues, it is the best way to combat increasing Japanese influence around the world. By fighting them there, we can fight them here. Congressman Kirkpatrick claims that any uh, careful observer of the region would have been able to see something like this approaching. But the magnitude, the complete and utter bonfire that is currently unfurling within Indonesia, is difficult to have predicted. The Congresswoman has also proposed direct military intervention in the region. American troops, flying American planes, firing American bullets from American guns would be crucial in securing Indonesians' alliances in the future. Should the United States successfully do this, it would be a death blow to the Japanese inf uh, influence in the southern Indian Ocean. As usual, responses to the op-ed are incredibly mixed, with some applauding the Congress movement's uh, keen eye, while others uh, calling her an open warmonger. And the hammer hits the anvil. By the way, Indonesia, are you, um... Co-founder of the United Front. I mean, there's still a um, there's still in our sphere, which is good. I was kind of worried that we would kind of frick it up a little bit, but we seem to be in an okay position. Keep on going. Hello and good morning. Can I speak to Colonel Jupe uh, Waru? This is Agent Thompson. I'm from the CIA. There continued to be no response for some time, even after Thompson waited what felt like a few minutes. So he wondered whether he'd gotten the wrong number after all. This task was important enough to wait, however. If America is to win Indonesia, it needed connections. And there wasn't anyone in North Sulawesi that was more pro-OFN than Colonel Waro. So he continued to wait patiently, hearing the shuffling of chairs and some muffled conversation in the background. A young woman's uh, voice suddenly came on the line. It spoke in a clean, slightly accented English. This is Colonel's translator. Who are you? Thompson uh, was startled, but uh, quickly gathered himself. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm Agent Thompson, CIA. Uh, we've been monitoring the situation in the country for some time. All of America is impressed with your movement's courage and strength. I want to let you know that we have your back all the way. We'll be sending you supplies by air and submarine. You should get them soon. Uh, this should help you hold your ground against Serrano's uh, regime. Uh, if you need anything, just call this number and we'll see what we can do for you. There's another pause while the young woman spoke again. The Colonel thanks you greatly for your generous help. We promise that uh, your help will not be in vain. Let us stay in touch. They chatted up for a little while after that, exchanging some pleasantries, but uh, before breaking it off. And as Agent Thompson walked back to his home in the dead of night, he felt a tremendous sense of satisfaction at another day's hard work. Oh, we've done our part, he thought. Now it is up to them. Is there anything else we can do for the intelligence right now? Is there anything actually we can do in here? This is just for Germany. Okay, so it's not that important. What about, um, Central Siberia? What are they up to? Are you at war? No, but I probably do want to give you some more money. Um... Let's send you some more money here, and then we will invest in Nova Cerberisk. I think that seems good. And then I notice we need another one of you. So let's go with um, the Belly Burster. That seems a little fucked up. Let's go with that one. Get that going. And is there anything else we can do? I think I have fucked up the leadership play uh, by doing it too early. <laughs> but uh, that's okay, because you need to be at 44%. Yeah, I definitely fucked it up. I, th I think we need to do it a little bit later when, um... Some, uh, we probably would have gotten some events later on where these uh, guys would maybe collapse in their support. But, uh... You know, you, you live and let learn. You, you live and learn. You know, what can you do? Move your way over to here. We have troops already in Leopoldville now. Come in here for the support. So you're worth five. You know, let's actually send you back around here for now. Our moral shadow, 
Support our allies. Again, this is for South Africa. We don't care about this at all. And if, again, people said that this doesn't matter so much. But um, we're not in crisis. Invest in our allies. United and ready. Go to Tokyo. Treaty port negotiations. I mean, that seems... Like, we can't even do this until after 1969. So actually, we have definitely some time to get this done. But this allows us to maybe get our ports back in from California, which, I mean, would be good. Across the aisle or the pact above all. So basically, are we wanting to the port will be seen as less liberal candidate, and this will be seen as being more liberal. Okay. We can now use Democrats to allies across for uh, temporary votes. I think that'll be better for us in the long run. Again, I, I know people are saying we don't want to go too liberal. Which, I mean, I understand. But this is going to be the first vote. So I think it makes sense for us to... Um, to for, for the first time, I think we'll look across the aisle. But uh, again, we're, we're, I'm going to make sure that we're tempering our expectations. We're, you know, we're in America. We can't have too much of a good thing. Uh, and we'll, we'll try our best here. We have 58, 61, 79. Like, we're so close. You know what, actually? Maybe the end of April? Maybe I actually was not... Uh, too crazy there. Like, what are we currently at? You are at 46%. There's a couple of cities here I would like to maybe take, if at all possible. Like, this guy's doing, a, like, fantastic work. Throw over there! Strike a match, Claude Pepper, Secretary of State, lit his, and the President Cigars. Cubans, Mr. President, gifts from Fidel himself. Best in the world. The absolute best. Indeed, replied Kennedy, smiling blithely. There uh, certainly are perks in having friends overseas. I only wish that we could have uh, gotten uh, Belgian chocolate. The two men puffed away in comfortable silence, filling the Oval Office with a uh, slowly drifting wafts of blue smoke. With the air of the uh, man dredging up a thought from the uh, deepest lit in his mind, Kenny said, You know, Claude, we're going to have to make some uh, changes. Malay, Africa, all these crises show the world is in turmoil, and the voters want us to show our teeth when the fascists come knocking. Uh, that's the way that's a wash over the Republican Democrats right out of the White House. If we don't show a firm hand to the Japanese, it'll wash us right back out in the scene 68. Exhaling a thin stream of smoke, Pepper tapped his cigar into the ashtray. Smiling at the president with a nicotine-stained teeth, he said, Damn straight, Bobby. We gotta give Hirohito the spanking his daddy yada gave him. And he was unable to prevent his mouth curving in an amusement. That we will, Claude. That we will. Okay, urban voters become more supportive of the, uh, progressives. We love to see it. You know what? I'm gonna move you here. Just so we can go to uh, Lulebrog, maybe take uh, Poto Poto, and then uh, one of you is going to Deinhardstadt, right? I think so. At least that's what I think I was trying to get you to do. Okay, so we can move you guys more north. Push you in this direction. Like, you're so close to collapsing. I really, really want you to be dead. <laughs> like, like so badly. Thermonuclear plants. Sure, we'll build some of those in the, uh, the middle of the country. Seems good to me. And for you, I mean, you're, you're fine. Grid power looks good. I know we're building even more grid power, but you know, that's okay. Did you die? Hey, excellent. And for our research slot, what do we want? I guess we'll go for the 60, uh, 66 artillery here. Or the 66 mortars. You're looking great. Better artillery. Um, you know, 1970. I, I guess we can go for some... Uh, Tank upgrades as well. You know, while we're in the neighborhood. Operational failure. This was in Nova Cerberusk. Anyway, it's fine. I don't think it's going to, like, really uh, support our enemies too much there. Align them with the OFN. Still 69%. I mean, the numbers are still good for us. Let's also do another military shipment. We'll send infantry equipment. Again, they're not at war yet. President Lott has defeated a coup attempt. Following news in Brazil today, following a coup attempt against President Henry Lott's government by the Minister of Defense, General Obelis Denis, the attempted coup came as a result of a bill submitted to President Lott to Congress that seeks to reduce the powers of the military and impose further restrictions on them to limit their pervasive influence over politics, which is currently allowed. In a miraculous turn of events, President Lott was able to rally his supporters among the constituents uh, within the military against Denis. Defeating the coup and passing the bill, the dust settles. Brazil now looks forward uh, to the presidential elections on the horizon. We love to see it. Let's go, Brazil, you fucking cool uh, boys. Excellent. Okay, so we were able to 
uh, stop Brazil from having a coup d'etat. Which I'm assuming is a positive for us. You're going to go up to here for five. You guys over ten. So let's send you to Evo. Let's send you to uh, Macau. We also have Libra. Libreville is actually worth 30 points. So let's go take that. You guys will just go to the border with Canada for now. Which I think is more than okay. You know what, actually, let's send you here. I want to send you to the other side of the world, if at all possible. And I want to take you to Hitlerstadt. You're worth five. You're worth five. I wish our allies would do, like, maybe a little bit more. Like, it doesn't seem like they're taking many victory points at all, but... Again, as long as we're kind of holding the Germans back... Oh, wait, okay, there we go. Okay, we, these did uh, come back. But we need to get you below um, 20%. So we can definitely make self-promotional media appearances. That'll get you down. So we need at least two more of you, I believe, in 54 days. You're going to go by plus five because I didn't realize what this actually did. But we should be okay. More GDP increases. Hey, plus actually 50 political power. That actually is quite nice. I actually am really happy to have that. Don't like that you guys are here, but... Not much you can do about that. Libreville being worth 30, that might be enough just to win the war, but I, I don't know for certain. Where's this guy? Okay, he's almost here. And we want to go to uh, Lulemberg. It is worth a lovely 30 points. Protest in Phom Phen. That is in Cambodia. So you reach across the aisle. Necessary sacrifice in memorandum. And I like the political power. Rally the progressives. Hey, and that's actually plus 100 political power in, in seven days. So let's point to caucus failures. I, I think it's very funny that the minute, like basically the the month that uh, the progressive party of the NPP has won the most power for themselves is immediately when they're like, you know what? The caucus has kind of failed, hasn't it? I, mean, I guess that goes to show you. I don't think you can ever make the progressives uh, too happy. Stop failing. Why am I paying the CIA anything? They're so bad at their jobs. We'll get them next time. Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll try. Um, don't care about any of this stuff. When will you be there? 13 days. So two weeks. Meeting with Lyndon B. Johnson. Two parties with different histories, but, but the goals alike. We find in Washington, D.C., the capital of our fair union, where civil agreements make civil life nice. An old alliance finds itself in new trouble. Two rivals are brought together to fight injustice. Today, Bobby went to go meet with Lyndon B. Johnson, the leader of the Democrats, to discuss plans for the presidency and to work out a roadmap of bills and laws the Democratic Party would work together with the president on. They quickly got uh, confirmed that they uh, long had believed that the other person had, was of the uh, worst character imaginable, rude, brash, and too highly thinking about themselves. The meeting was planned and arranged by uh, one of the Democratic Party leaders, and worst of all, there were going to be more of these meetings. But as the president came back to the White House, he said, He has some, actually, only a few good ideas. But what an awful man. The less I see of him, the better. Despite the harsh comments, the meeting was actually somewhat constructive, and they managed to work out some ideas and note a, uh, of the uh, circulated in the party. Okay. Let's go to here. We can get ourselves a encirclement of those uh, German divisions. The Lot Act has passed. Congratulations. There's just three cheers to President Lot. He's done great work. And actually, am I going to be able to pass this? Because we have three days. No, it's going to take four. But a negative ten will still be just fine. I want you up here to assist. This has now been encircled. But then, there's no reason for me to actually do any damage. Because, um... Obviously... Like, the war in South Africa is going to be over very soon. Okay, so it's not going to be the end of April like I had originally predicted, but it's definitely going to be um, end of May. Like, I think Libreville might be all we need. Okay, so there's our political power. Let us now do Canvas MPP Senators for support. And that should mean... Change your leadership of the Progressive Caucus. A shift of fortunes have rocked the Progressive Caucus as the NPP has successfully triumphed over the RDC. Excellent. A strong showing. Badger and Spock is now the new leader. 
will increase by 42%. So you're now at 60%, which is not great, obviously, because we have, um, because we kind of changed leadership and there's a bit of a turmoil there. But, like, astounding among everybody, I mean, it, it, this seems good. Both leaders of both caucuses right now have astounding popularity, uh, which, I mean, that seems good. We don't need to sh show leadership plays anymore. Um, inflation in check is currently less than four. Poverty rate is not decreasing, unfortunately. How are, how are you guys doing? Inflation is actually going back up, which is embarrassing. We don't create any more money. Um, but you know what? Because we're almost going to win the war, we can probably cut military expenditures a decent amount. And let's actually cut nuclear expenditures as well. We are still losing a little bit of money, but honestly, it's not that bad. So we'll see how this goes. I mean, we made our military worse. Like, that's true. When will you be there? Four days? You're... There's, is there 31 days in April? Or, um... 30. How many days are in April? <laughs> does, anybody, does anybody know? Has, have scientists figured this one out? 30th of April. I think it's just 30, right? <gasps> Midnight. The day... It was literally, literally the last day of, uh, of April. So my prediction was correct. A new day over Africa. The news surrounding the outcome of the uh, of the the news surrounding the outcome of the South African war had been reported on the television all day. But when it was announced to the president, uh, was it announced that President Kennedy was making an international address? Millions gathered around their televisions, eagerly awaiting to hear what he had to say. The student smiling president sat in the Oval Office, exuded the uh, air of confidence as he uh, faced the camera directly before finally speaking. My fellow Americans, he said. I am pleased to share with you the news that the last pockets of organized German resistance in Africa have collapsed, and their leaders dead, captured, or fled. We have defeated the Africa Shield, and with it, the shadow over the continent has been lifted. We are victorious, and the South African war is over. Where crowds gathered to watch the address, they broke into cheers, and celebrations across the country had begun. There are many reasons to celebrate the victory, not just for democracy, but uh, by dealing a significant blow against Germany and fascism across the world. To prevent the continent from uh, falling into anarchy, the president continued, the Organization of Free Nations has begun the process of establishing mandates in the continent, which will exist to uh, help transition the continent to democracies and prevent unnecessary power vacuums and violence. For decades, Africa has suffered, Kennedy finished, under the Reich and under colonialism. We will work to repair this magnitude of damage. The president paused. We have successfully defeated the German menace, but our work to uh, better the world continues. A new day shines over Africa, and for that, I thank each and every American citizen and serviceman who has made this possible. God bless you, and may God bless America. An immediate moderate shit support for the Progressive Caucuses, the focus tree will change, and um, we'll become more internationalist. So this program has three mandates. We have the provisional government of the Congo, of Angola, and of the East African Unity uh, government, which is lovely. And I want to say, I'm glad they don't give you the ability to form it into one giant mandate. Because I remember when we played uh, America the first time, everyone in Twitch chat was like, hey, you should make it one giant mandate. Uh, turned out to be a bad idea. Is there anything else we can do here? Military somewhat disloyal. So let's boost... The loyalty of the uh, army a little bit here in Brazil. Operation Sakabis, global conflicts. That's now been removed. Escalation is high. Escalate uh, anti-Japanese rhetoric. Let's get that going. Um, let's spend you. And then we'll do another 10 points here. This content is pretty low. We're still in the insurgency phase. But now that we've ended one war, by golly, am I, am I ready to start another one? Okay, so this is fighting tyranny. So that, I guess the uh, African one has just been removed. Which is fine. It's actually, it's actually a good thing that that's now gone. The South African war... Oh, wait, no. The South African war victory. Okay, no, this actually allows me to make it into one big one. Which is stupid. Don't ever click this button. We took the brave decision to join the South Africans' defensive war against the German aggressors. There were many who claimed that uh, we'd entered a pointless war. One where true victory was impossible due to the circumstances of the situation. Yet, when the final Reichskammerstrat surrendered and our leaders were taken into custody, none could deny the fact that we'd achieved overwhelming victory against the forces of tyranny. During the war, we discovered the deplorable conditions of native people in Africa were kept by their German oppressors. Disease and famine were common, and the regimes uh, cared little for their people beyond how much wealth could be extracted before they ran dry. 
This has to change. Our South African allies have uh, taken administration control over Namibia, Rhodesia, and southern Mozambique. And at least the vast swaths of land in Central Africa under our control. Even a land would be ridiculous and an idiotic idea. However, we uh, must choose whether to establish multiple democratic states in the area or whether to create a single unified Central African state. Yes, yeah, so we'll keep uh, separate mandates. The end of the South African War. South Africa has gotten extremely chunky. No one, uh, let's, I guess we'll break German ciphers? Sure, why not? 1,980 days seems good to me. Anything else we want to do here? Escalation will increase. Loans for democracy. Let's buy some more Indonesian resources. I think we're kind of fine for now. Our units are coming back home. And a triumph in South Africa. It is official. Africa is free. The Organization of Free Nations emerged victorious in the fight against the Africa Shield, crushing the three Nazi rights commissariats that tried to tear democ democratic South Africa apart and expand their fascist ideology all over Africa. President Robert F. Kennedy spoke to the nation from the Oval Office to announce the victory, and America's brave boys will be returning home as soon as humanly possible. Even after the uh, first charter Pan Am flight touched down in the airports across the eastern seaboard, thousands of, across the thousands uh, filled terminals and parking lots, waving flags, singing the national anthem, and uh, cheered heartwarming uh, scenes of tired soldiers hugging and kissing their wives and children. Snapped by photographers and uh, to be shared in newspapers and preserved for eternity. The Secretary of Defense has announced plans to hold a military parade in Washington, D.C. to honor the returned veterans that have saved the continent from barbary and slavery. With the defeat of the Nazis in Africa, now comes a long and tough work to uh, rebuild half a continent for a bright and democratic future. War crime trials are being held to try uh, the capture Essence and Weimark soldiers, as well as the Boer irregulars that caused so much death and destruction. New nations will be set up to allow the people of Africa to uh, make their own destiny, to fully support and rebuild the African, to be f uh, to fully with fully supported and rebuilt with American money and technical expertise. And of course, millions of people, former slaves, war amputees, orphans, and the hungry and sick will uh, be cared for in Africa. We and the uh, will our own troops who have been uh, seen bloody battles and gruesome deeds that the few believe humans are capable of. But that's tomorrow's job. Today we celebrate the victory over Nazism and that our brave men and women are coming home. The war sport's gonna go up. Hunter for the political power. Organization of free nations become a little bit more unified. Trust in the government's gonna go up. Uh, Sir's manpower for is gonna go down. Better optics, people will love us, and the focus tree will change. So I'm assuming this is now going to open up. Um, okay, no, not, not not yet. I was going to say maybe this will open up the, the tree to help us rebuild Africa. But it's not seem like that's going to be the case, at least not yet. And you know what, let's actually um, put one point into uh, key abilities here. I think that seems okay. I want to cut military spending even more. I mean, we'll cut naval expenditures. So what does this actually do? Fleet coordination. Are we, like, literally ever? 4.5. So, I mean, we do decrease stability. But we're at 95%. Is there ever a time, like, genuinely? Is there ever a time when you are actually going to be using your navy in this game? In this mod? Like, I'm trying to even think of, like, when, what war would we be in where we would want a navy? Like, I feel like we're ever at war with, like, actually at war with Japan, then uh, you would simply, that would just lead to nuclear war. So, like, I don't know why we'd want this. Military austerity. Political power goes down. Well, we spend a lot of money. You know what? Sure. Do a little bit of military austerity for now. And that should be okay. But with the war in South Africa won, I think it's really going to be a great time for us to end this episode. So if you enjoyed it, thumbs up. Not enjoy, you can always thumb down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.